Hi folks, today I'd like to share three ways in which you can hack your DNA. Did you know you can hack your DNA? Through the science of epigenetics, it is possible. What is epigenetics? Well, a bit like epiderm, above the derm. Epigenetics goes above the genes. So we often believe that our health is governed by the genes that we receive by our parents. But there are certain aspects that can be controlled by the person. This was discovered in a lab by Dr. Bruce Lipton, a famous molecular biologist who had taken cells of heart and had put them in different petri dishes. In one petri dish, he had replicated heart cells. Normal, because you start with the DNA of the heart cell. But in a different petri dish, he reproduced liver cells. And in a third petri dish, skin cells. And in a fourth petri dish, bone cells. And he thought, how is this possible? I'm starting with the heart cell. How can I be replicating different parts of the body? And he realized that it was the environment in each petri dish. The nutrients of each petri dish was different. And so this affected the replication of the cells. This is why we don't grow lungs on our face because there's a certain code in our DNA to produce and replicate cells. We are a trillion cells in our body the same logic applies to the environment. The environment will affect the manifestation of the gene. So it's a fallacy to think that because we receive genes of our parents, this is the way that it is and it's set in stone. You have control over your genes and the production of proteins through the environment, the food that we eat, the emotions that we feel, and also through connection. These are the three ways. So diet is part of the environment. So the food that we eat will have a major impact on the protein that we produce. One example of this is the protein of leptin, which is a hormone that tells your brain that you've had enough food and you don't need to eat anymore. Now, when you eat processed foods, when you eat a lot of sugar, that response is delayed. Why? Because epigenetically, these proteins are affected through the chemicals in the food. And so let's say you have a receptor in your gut that usually binds with this hormone, it'll connect and then you'll have the pathway to tell your brain, there's been enough food eaten, we don't need to eat anymore. But if you start denaturing that protein in a way that it can no longer bind to that receptor, then your brain doesn't get that pathway, that message, the signaling doesn't occur. And so epigenetically, because of the diet that you've been eating, which is not optimal, you are delaying that response. And so you continue eating, continue eating, continue eating, which is not always the healthiest way of living. And so if you could change the things that you eat, avoid processed foods, for example, have organic food, healthy nutrients, fruits, vegetables, then your signaling gets affected and gets optimized. Now, number two is the emotions. An example of this is adrenaline. This is affected by the emotions that we live. We don't produce adrenaline because our parents produced adrenaline. We were given the genes to produce the protein of adrenaline in certain circumstances where you're facing fear and danger. And this is to save your body. So it becomes clear then that epigenetics is very dependent on emotions. If you can contain those emotions and have better control over them, then you are epigenetically regulating the hormonal system of your body. And so we know that fear and adrenaline is a way to save your body. Stress produces cortisol, which is also another way to manage yourself out of sticky situations. In the past, this was very adaptive because 10% of the time you could be facing a danger like a bear in the woods. But now many people are constantly living in stress. It's, it's in full overdrive. 70% of the time we're producing adrenaline, cortisol, all these hormones that are normally adaptive and healthy, but we're producing them in toxic levels. And so if we can reset our nervous system, we can contain the abundance of these hormones. And number three is the connection. And what do I mean by connection? I mean any kind of connection, connection with people, connection with yourself and your whole nervous system. Another example of this is connecting with nature. It doesn't necessarily have to be with other people. But there's been a scientific study that was conducted in Japan where people were only staring at trees, not meditating or praying, but only staring at trees would affect their serotonin levels and their hormonal levels would be stabilized. 
And so this enhances the whole neurology and the connection in your brain as to be optimized. If you can have control over this, as I previously said, you will have better health and produce better hormones. So these are three ways which you could hack your, your DNA and your epigenetic.